All right, to start off, just can you just kind of tell us about Wisconsin, what they're doing well this year and what you have to worry about? Yeah, Why? you know, for them, I think it's the, you know, just the combination of no matter who's in the game, they all can shoot threes. You know, other night, you know, their whole team, you know, made threes. They hit 18 threes. And just their ability to kind of, you know, spread you out. Um, normally guys will have maybe a one big guy that can, you know, make threes. Both of their centers mm -hmm. make threes. Um, but that's how they'll get you. You know, they'll, they'll get the ball in the interior and and make you play. They invert a lot of things where they make guards play post defense. They make bigs play on the perimeter. And uh, they just try to play to their matchups, really to the strengths of their matchups. So, um, you know, you just have to be disciplined. You know, you have to do a good job of, of being able to defend out of the post. And uh, you can't get behind plays, whether that's ball screen defense or transition, um, because when they do and you get into those rotations, you know, it's hard when they're knocking down their shots. What do you have to do to win the matchup with Matt and Travion versus Potter and Reavers? Yeah. Well, I, I think you got to make it, you know, hard on, you know, them to, to defend them. You know, I. You know, you have to get the ball to those guys and, you know, into the post. And um, and you got to be able to do it in multiple ways. You know, you got to get out in transition. You got to get on the glass. You got to get deep post ups. Um, and then, you know, and then get to your move. Like, you know, a lot of times you get there and then, like, you know, the physical play will knock you right. to where you might get your move, but then you're, you know, three or four feet out, you know, further than you want to be. And uh, that's what, you know, obviously everybody tries to do. <clears throat> from a defensive standpoint, um, just to get people out a little bit further. So get to your strength and um, try to get as deep as possible. And then just take advantage of, of opportunities, whether you're diving to the rim or just playing out of rotations. What's been kind of the give and take thus far of <coughs> playing your two bigs together? And is that process complete now? Are they used to it or are you still uh, learning no, about it? No, we've struggled, right. to be frank with you. Right. Um, you know, we, we have the, the spacing when they play. Um, you know, you, you really, you know, you need to put skill there out there with them. And <coughs> if we don't shoot the basketball well, that doesn't help them. That doesn't raise their value together. But then defensively, we've just been okay. So mm -hmm. we've tried a lot of different things. We'll keep trying things, and you know, hopefully, we can find that happy medium. <coughs> you guys are making me sick. <laughs> If we don't do these things, I'd be perfectly healthy. <laughs> we usually make ourselves sick. At least Mike. I'm honest. I know it was very direct. <laughs> What's it going to take for you guys to maybe to stretch the defense a little bit more? Than you know, just trying to get into a good offensive flow and make shots. I mean, you know, I don't think it's anything in particular. We have some guys that, you know, that, you know haven't shot the ball well. They can shoot the ball much better. Other night I thought... <coughs> Other guys didn't play well on the interior, and that definitely didn't help Sasha. They just stayed with Sasha. Mm -hmm. um, he got a couple good looks, but for the most part, Illinois did a good job of staying with him. So we got to open up some things and, and just be more consistent shooting the basketball. And you know, it starts with execution. You know, trying to be better um, from an execution standpoint um, of, of getting quality shots. When you do that, it's going to help your percentages. Is the Wisconsin bring a similar physical type of defense? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think they're as imposing, but those, those guys scrap and they play hard and they have a lot of experience. You know, uh, you know, a lot of time when you talk um, about you know rebounding or being tough or being physical, you know, you don't have to be that and be the most imposing physical talent in the world to be able to do that. But they're both their bigs are good and they're like you know they're twos through fours. But those, those guys play hard and they get after it. So you know we're going to have to do a good job. Uh, from a from a competitive standpoint, you know, because Wisconsin teams always play hard. You had mentioned before that you had been you'd seen the, at the Division Two level a, a big fight before. Do you ever have to talk to your guys about what happens in that yeah. situation? Because if they leave the bench, it, that's pretty big repercussions. Yeah. Well, that's the first that's the first thing as a coach, as a head coach, that you try to do is when something goes down, is you you know you keep your guys, um, you know, on the bench. You keep them there because obviously that, those are automatic ejections for those guys because normally in, a, in something like that that happens you're you're not going to be right on top of things you know that's you know you have three officials um, you have hopefully people on your team I thought other night what's how Sasha handled it um, you know was very you know professionally handled it instead of you know going to do something um, you know he just you know he took it and backed up because that, that could have you know led to an all-out brawl you know, if you step on the wrong person um, that, that maybe doesn't have his wits about him like he did. So, um, 
But yeah, that's the first thing that I do. That's you know, you tell your assistants is you, know, you go get the people on your bench, and you know if the bench never leaves, you know some things can obviously still happen. But you're you're hoping that you, the three officials can handle the people that are on the court, and uh, and then try to you know break things up. But is the the Griffin thing over in your mind? I mean, yeah, that's nothing. You know, we got beat by Illinois. That's the narrative. Sometimes people lose the narrative. So um, we did the post game. You know, media interview, not, not one person asked me about it. It was kind of ironic, you know. Um, but, no, it's, you know, he made a mistake, paid for his penalty, got kicked out. And to me, you know, it's, it is what it is. But I'm not the one that got stepped on. You know what I mean? It's like it's easy for you when you're not the one that gets stepped on. You know, I, you know, for those guys, I told them not to comment on it, just leave it alone and move on because, you know, that wasn't the story. I think sometimes you get lost in the story. The story was Illinois, you know, played harder and played better than Purdue. But the apology was enough in your mind to yeah, their coach move this called, thing forward. Called, yeah. called me and right. you know, apologized, and you know, so yeah, so you'd have to ask Sasha, you know, going forward. And like I said, when you're the one that gets stepped on, you know, your opinion matters. Where right. do you want your team to take competitively from the way the second half unfolded? Why, well, you know, we didn't. I didn't think we took much from a competitive standpoint from the first game. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd like you know, you would think you would have a better response than that. Um, I like a, a more of a mature response than anything, you know. From you know, you you get to this level and you play at this level and you have experience, you know. You you got to be competitive. You know, you got to be able to beat the guy in front of you. And then when, you know, they just, they outworked us in Champagne and they outworked us here, and so you know, you want a response. You know, a lot of times, you see coaches and you see them yelling and screaming and people just think that you're crazy. You just want a response. Some guys respond differently to others, but as a group. You know, you got to have your mainstays. You know, you know, be competitive and not give in and just keep fighting. And maybe it doesn't work that time, but you know, you when you keep fighting and you keep your head, you know, about you, you know, good things are going to happen. You see what you want to see in practices and days leading up to games. Um, sometimes you get it. You know, you get evaluated on how you play in games. You know, that's just. It's, it's the way it is. You know what I mean? Like so I've had it before where guys just really practice well and don't play well. I've had the vice versa where guys kinda of go through the motion motions at times and then you gotta get on them and fight them or whatever, then the game comes and they're ready to play in the game. You know, so you, you have it, you know, both ways. So um, we have to be a, a more consistent it's not the backbone. The competitive piece is more important. Um, but after you practice for four months, you know, it's it's four months of practice. You know, you wanna sit there and practice for three and a half hours and you know, now guys aren't fresh during games or they're not, but, you know, the mental is way more important than the physical, but you also don't want to be shorthanded because you're sitting there crushing each other, you know, every single day. But um, I, I just think we just have to grow up more than anything. You know, e- each guy has got to be able to make, you know, strides in, in, in terms of, you know, playing hard and playing smart. At times we'll play harder. At times, you know, when we do that, we don't, we don't play as smart. We just got to be more consistent in those areas.